Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the most powerful meditative formula on the face of the planet. This formula will take a beginning meditator and transform them into an absolute master of meditation in a very short period of time. It is literally giving you the understanding and the ability to skip 40 years. It just blows my mind. And it's so simple, it's so straightforward, and it's absolutely clinical. It's in your body. And that's really what yoga is. Yoga says, look, we're not going to jump into the deep end of the pool of meditation. We didn't do any preparation. Don't you think we ought to do some preparation? What are we going to begin with? Well, let's begin with the breath. Everybody knows that, right? Meditation, we're going to begin with the breath. What is the breath a part of? The body. The yogi looks to the body to prepare it. And that is what enables the very deep states. He prepares the body to prepare the mind. And then he's ready for the very deep states that are inside of the deep brain. Isn't that amazing? So let's get into it. It's so simple. Oh my goodness. It, I go back and I think about my history and I think, oh my God, if I had this formula from the beginning, if you could go back and explain to me that meditation is a formula, that it's a form of biofeedback, that you quiet the body to quiet the mind. Oh my God, these simple, straightforward yogic understandings. If I could go back, oh, Man, amazing. But here we are. And so here it is, very, very simply. HRV resonant breathing plus sitting very still plus four proofs plus Om Japa in the chakras. That's the formula. Those are the things we are trying to put together in this beginning of meditation. How do I get into meditation? How do I really soak myself into calm and peace? How do I stop the chatter of the mind? It's this big mystery. No, it's not. It's easy. It's so easy. And don't expect it to be perfect. We just want a qualitative difference. That means a little bit better. And then another qualitative difference. It means a little more better. <laughs> and then another qualitative difference. A little better and a little better. And pretty soon you will be astounded at the peace that you find. But it all starts with that formula. So it all starts with HRV resonance breathing. The whole world knows that meditation and breath go together. That's right. It's all about the long breathing, not the deep breathing, the long breathing. You want a long breath so that the out breath especially can begin to awaken the parasympathetic system. So I breathe in and I breathe out long, right? Under seven breaths per minute, at least. And how do I do all of this? Well, I just go to the Resonant Breathing app and it will guide me into this beginning understanding of resonant breathing. What is that? How do I find the breath which is comfortable for me? Well, you just play with it. You go up and down the different rates until you find the one which is really comfortable. It's not about, oh, I got to strain my way into the lowest breath. No, you're, you're not ready. Now you're in strain. Now you're in the left brain. Now you're in the sympathetic system. We want the right brain, the parasympathetic system. So right off the bat, I have to do this. And we're already in the wrong place, right? We have to let go of that. Just find the one which is super, super comfortable for you. That's the HRV resonant breathing. That's it. We just want to elongate the breath 
so that we can begin to awaken the parasympathetic system. And that allows the body to slow down, which reflects back on the mind. The mind slows down. We want a qualitative difference, just a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And pretty soon it's very much better, isn't it? So we're going to combine that with sitting very still. Usually it's quite difficult. You tell somebody, sit down in meditation, don't move a muscle. Don't move a muscle. Get really super comfortable and don't move a muscle. And usually that's quite difficult to tell somebody to accomplish. But when you start out with the base of the pyramid, which is HRV resonance, now you add on the next layer of sitting very still and it's so easy. It's easy because you're already in resonance. The heart rate is already coming down because of that resonant breathing. You're already feeling very relaxed and that allows you to sit very still. And because you are doing these two things at once, you're going to awaken the freeze response. So the freeze response starts to show up because you're awakening your parasympathetic system and you're sitting very still and that will bring forth a little bit of the freeze response inside of you, inside of your meditation. And so because of all of that, you will begin to notice the four proofs. And the four proofs are very simple. They're just signals in your body. You're checking your body to, for signs that the parasympathetic system has shown up. It's come online. And that means you're exiting from the sympathetic system. Most of us are in stress all the time. And the Western world especially is in stress all the time. And you go to the news and it's stressful and you go to work and it's stressful and you drive on the freeway and it's stressful and you go to your family and it's stressful. Over and over and over and over. Where's the break? I mean, do you even sleep at night and get to really rest? Where is the break? It's right here. This is the break. Meditation. It's the answer. The amount of stress which is on the modern individual would have broken your ancestors. They would have gone nuts. They would have lost their mind. But if you slowly cook a frog, right? <laughs> so very slowly we, we've become acclimatized to all of this stress. But your ancestors would be shaking their heads at you going, what are you doing? This is crazy. This is way too much stress. But here we are, right? So what is the answer? This is it. Meditation. Very simple, straightforward, clinical meditation. This is the answer for the modern age. And so those proofs are very simple. They're very straightforward. They're just signs that you have awakened your parasympathetic system. So the first one, I'm sitting there very still. My hands are in my lap and I start to notice my hands are getting hot and heavy. H-H-H, -H -H, hands hot and heavy. That's just an easy way to remember it. People say, oh, Forrest, my hands, I have something wrong with my hands. They're not getting hot. They're just getting a little warm. That's it. That's it. That's the hands hot and heavy. It's warm. That's good enough. Sometimes it might get warmer. Sometimes you'll actually feel it hot. All of that is great. That is the hands hot and heavy. You have done it right there. That's it. You've awakened your parasympathetic system. Your meditation was an absolute success because some meditators will have a, a different system and they'll fall into that once every three meditations they'll fall into it one every 10 meditations you're gonna do it every single time because you know exactly how it works in your body there's no mystery it's straightforward it's simple it's easy i sit there i do the long breathing i enter into HRV resonance in my body. I sit very still and I start to notice the four proofs. Easy, easy. My hands are hot and heavy. And then I might move my attention to my lips. Do I feel tingling? Because I'm in the HRV resonance, that means my heart rate's going down and it goes up nicely and then it goes down in this beautiful valley of peace and then it goes up a little and then it goes down into this beautiful valley of peace. And so my heartbeat is going to go up and down inside of my lips and I might feel that. It might be even a little bit of a tingling. And because I am doing this long breathing, right? I have this long exhale and it's 
pushing up with the diaphragm. It's pushing the breath out and that long exhale. And all that extra pressure is coming up here in the thoracic cavity, just wonderfully, just pushing backwards, massaging all of the organs, pressing against my dorsal vagal, pressing everything in this cavity against my spine. And that's where the dorsal vagal complex is. That's what creates the freeze response and this gorgeous parasympathetic arousal, right? It's pushing down. This awakening of the parasympathetic is happening because of that pressure on the dorsal vagal. And so in my meditation, I might start to feel that. I do a long exhale and I feel that pressure in the thoracic cavity. Now, when I do the meditation, it's all going to be through the nose. That's the most economical. But I'm breathing out so you can hear what I'm doing, right? I feel that pressure against the spine. And it might start out like a little tickle along the spine. You might feel it right around the rib cage. But this tickle comes along the spine. And that's the beginning of feeling that pressure on the dorsal vagal. And then that feeling, it starts to become a little bit blissful. And then it gets a little more blissful. And then it's blissful and ecstatic every single time you feel it. You go back to the spine. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> you know where it is. You found it. And now you can find it. You can come back. Maybe you can't find it instantly, but you hunt, you hunt. Oh, I know it's here. I found it before. You find it again. And then you come back again, you find it again. And now you've got this reservoir of bliss all the time. You can find it. You found it before, you can find it again. That's it. That's meditation. I came back here. I, I found the HRV resonance once. I can do it again. I found the hands hot and heavy. I'm in the parasympathetic. I'm sitting very still. I found some of that freeze response. I can find it again. That's it. It's easy. You know the way now. It's so easy. It's been mapped for you. Oh, you just follow the map and you're there. Done. You found the treasure, man. You got the treasure map. We sit with these and then we might notice the wonderful tingling in the skin. And now we've really gotten into the parasympathetic and that freeze response is really starting to show itself. And that's the first, one of the first signs that you might notice of the freeze response that the skin begins to tingle. It might start in the part of your body which is the most relaxed. It might be your hands, might be your arms, might be your chest, might be your face, might be your legs. Could be any part of your body begins to tingle, especially along the skin. And that's the freeze response. That's the beginning of it. That's the fourth proof. And now we're really cooking in our meditation, aren't we? We're doing so good. You don't have to find all the four proofs, but if you find any of them, it's proof to you that you have awakened your parasympathetic and your meditation is deep and correct. It has begun correctly. This is the foundation that must be in place for everything else that you might be looking for in meditation. Those deep states of being. So while we're in this wonderful deep state, we might want to do a little bit of house cleaning, get everything out of the way so that the consciousness can rise very easily back towards the brain. And that is the process of Om Japa in the chakras. So I just feel the first chakra mentally. I don't have to move. And then I Om into it. Then I feel the second chakra mentally and I Om into it mentally. I feel the third, same thing. I feel it mentally, I ohm into it mentally. If I don't think I'm in the perfect spot inside of the body, that's okay. I like to say that the ohm japa is kind of like throwing a little ohm bomb into the chakra. And the wonderful thing about throwing a bomb, you don't have to be perfect because it's gonna, you're gonna throw it and it's just gonna boom, it explodes. It's in a big, a nice big explosion. You didn't have to be perfect, right? So don't worry. A lot of Kriya Yogis, when they're learning the Om Chapa, they get worried. I don't think I'm being perfect enough. Probably not. No, because you're getting to know the chakra. You're getting to know what it's like to feel inside of the body. And this is a process. It's going to get easier and better. But remember that Om, it's a big, it's a nice little bomb. 
You just throw it into the chakra and you watch it explode and it didn't have to be perfect. And you don't have to visualize these things. We want to feel them. I feel the heart. I ohm into the heart. And I'm trying to get back towards the origin of the chakra. So here's the spine. Here's the front of the body. Ashokji told me. This is, so, this is so profound. It's so simple and it's so profound. He said, here on the spine, this is the origin of the chakra. Here on the front of the body, this is the very big doorway of the chakra. What do you do at your doorway? You go out, you open the door, and you meet people outside. And what do you do at the origin? Well, you go back to your bedroom, you sit down on your bed, you lay down, you go to sleep. That's your home is in the origin. And so with each ohm, I feel it like a little Pac-Man eating in to get to the origin. Or you might start on the back of the body through the back of the spine. That's also fine. That's great. Om and get to the origin. It's that origin that we want. So each Om is penetrating into and back to the origin. I feel the medulla. I Om into the medulla. Wonderful. That's the Om Japa. Up, down, up, down. Beautiful. Over and over as many times as you can. At least two or three rounds of that. And now you've really cleared the way, haven't you? And so this is a very deep, profound, magical formula. And it will give you the foundation of all meditation. Every meditative system is attempting to lower the heart rate and get the body out of the way so that clarity arises in the mind and you can actually use your mind in a clear moment to focus on the divine. That, in a nutshell, is yoga. That is what yoga is trying to do, the Raja Yoga of meditation. That's what it's attempting to give to you, clarity, so you can put your mind on the divine. Clarity so you can perceive the superconscious mind. That's it. Now, how can we add to this beautiful formula? What if you put Mahamudra and Navi Kriya right before this formula? Prepare the body a little more through stretching, right? Through stretching the arteries in Mahamudra. And then sit and do some Navi and clear out the third chakra, which is this humongous hurdle for the yogi, right? The hurdle, the hurdle that nobody knows. But you know it because fear is our hurdle in life. What would you do with your life if you had no fear, right? How amazing would your life be if you had no fear? Zero, none. <laughs> would you be able to feel anything negative in your life if you had no fear? Think about that. All of my negative emotions, all of my limiting decisions, could I actually keep those running if I had zero fear? How would that work? What would that look like? This is a thought experiment. What would that, what would that, could I really do that without fear? Navi is magical. So put Mahamudra and Navi before this formula and then run it. See what it does to you then. And then for the ever so adventurous, put the cute baby and the hakala at the end. So I start with Mahamudra, then I go to Navi, then I go to HRV Resonance, and I do some sitting very still, of course, and I do the, I make sure I have the four proofs, and I do some Om Japa, and then maybe somewhere in there I throw in some cute baby and some hakala. See what that does to you. And now it's just this beautiful formula which I can mix and match and see what it does to me. Experiment in the lab of my own meditation and you'll be a meditative master in no time. It will open the window to profound peace, profound quiet in your body, in your mind, profound insight, downloads will come to you this relationship will emerge with your own subconscious and through that another relationship with the superconscious mind will arise. It's the most glorious thing. So where can you find all of this? Well, it's here. That's what's in this. And I've given you right now the first half of the book. That's it. That's the first half. You've already accomplished in all of that. You've accomplished so much. 
And what's more, it's correct. It's it's right. It has insurance policies built into it to keep you in line, to keep you on track, to keep you out of trouble in your meditations and in your life. It's kind of amazing. It blows me away. And this is everything that I wanted. I always had this strange idea that there was a system out there like this. And there was. It was Kriya Yoga. And this is an understanding of how Kriya Yoga actually works. So I hope you loved this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.